This is a continuation of Lesson 13, Earned Value. In this lesson, we will discuss cost and schedule performance indices. An effective way to analyze how efficient your project is progressing is to calculate cost performance index and schedule performance index. Let's discuss cost performance index first. Cost performance index, or CPI, relates the amount of physical work accomplished against the dollars actually spent to accomplish the work. It's calculated as earned value cost divided by actual cost. A value of less than one indicates that actual costs have exceeded the value of the work accomplished. Another way to look at that for our project here is that for every dollar spent only 67 cents in physical work was accomplished. Let's discuss Schedule Performance Index. Schedule Performance Index, or SPI, relates the physical work accomplished against the amount of work that was planned. SPI is calculated as earned value cost divided by planned value cost. And again, a value of less than one indicates that less work was actually performed than was scheduled. In other words, for every dollar of physical work this project had planned to accomplish, only 50 cents worth of work was actually accomplished. Let's now discuss another important value, and that is estimate to complete. There are various methods for calculating estimate to complete and your preferred technique is established at the WBS. Currently my estimate to complete is reflected as remaining cost for this activity. With remaining cost as my estimate to complete added to my actual cost of $3,000 I can arrive at my estimate at completion for this activity. Let's look at some of the other methods. We'll go to the WBS and again on the Earned Value tab, we can see the technique for computing estimate to complete can be established. The default for ETC is to use remaining cost for the activity. Notice the other methods. The second method is that ETC is calculated based on a performance factor times budget at completion minus earned value, where you get to select beneath how you would like to calculate the performance factor. If the performance factor is equal to 1, that yields a very optimistic result. If you base the performance factor on 1 divided by CPI, you will yield what it would be considered the most likely result. If the performance factor is 1 divided by cost performance index times schedule performance index, you yield a very pessimistic result. So let's take a look at each one of these examples. Let's start with using a performance factor of 1. When we go back to our activities window, we'll see that our estimate to complete changed from remaining cost for the activity to the value using performance factor equal to 1. In this example, you can see this yields a very optimistic result which was actually better than our previous result of $9,000 for estimate at completion. Let's go back to our WBS and let's establish that we would like our performance factor to be 1 divided by CPI. Again, this represents a reliable indicator of the minimum total required costs. It's viewed as the most optimistic the project will do based on its history. So if we go back to our activities window now, we can see that our estimate to complete is now set to $9,000 and estimate at completion is $12,000. Going back to our WBS, let's revert to performance factor equals 1 divided by CPI times SPI. This gives the most pessimistic result. So when we go to our activities window, we can see that now our estimate to complete is reflected as $18,000 and estimate at completion is $21,000. This method represents a 
very good indicator of the maximum total costs required because it incorporates both the cost overrun to date and the behind schedule condition to produce this statistical forecast. This is viewed as the very worst the project will do based on its history. This concludes Lesson 13 regarding earned value.